Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more Disguise 3 Absence of Detention. In the last episode, we did the bios for the main characters of the game, as well as a certain superhero. And in this episode, we are going to start the bios for the post game characters, those being these eight. Rutile and Stella, I am doing instead of the Disgaea 1 trio just for uh, thematic reasons. <laughs> so, yeah. What are we doing here? We are putting Prism Red in a match change group uh, just so we don't have a repeat of what happened last time. Sit down! Might as well put a bunch of guys in for no particular reason. <laughs> what am I doing? They're past me. What are you doing? You're being weird. Stop it, past me. Alright. In any case... Let's re-enter the pra practice map and... Let's begin. First up, we have Master Bigster, otherwise known as Master Big Star. <laughs> I still haven't changed his name back. Um, you get him after clearing the first bonus map. Uh, his core ability, You Are Useless, uh, protects him from human type unit damage. His other ability, Beauty is Sin, uh, works the same way that Princess Glitter does on Sapphire. It increases the stats of any adjacent female units. Pretty nice, especially if you want to power up, uh, for example, Rutile and uh, can't spare any cheerleaders or whatever. As for uh, Master Bigster's abilities, he learns uh, four fist skills and three sword and bow skills. Again, that is for Absence of Justice. In Absence of Detention, he learns six of everything. Pretty great. As for his unique no, skills, good. they're both uh, very rosy, let's say. <laughs> Checkmate. Next up, we have his, uh... Right. Next up, we have his other skill, Rose Stinger, which uh, hits, a, hits tiles in an X shape with the center three panels away from him. Shall we dance? Not quite as uh, versatile as Vasa Aragon, but it does what it needs to do. Also, that is... that's gotta hurt. <laughs> Getting whipped by a rose whip. Yeah. As for Master Bigster's stats, um, he's definitely more of a fist user than anything else. Uh, his highest ability, or his highest aptitude, is his speed. And I don't know why I'm still talking because we are uh, going over his other ability, which is. Screw counters. When Master Bigster has this equipped, he refuses to counterattack, but he takes 20% less damage. So if counterattacks aren't really your thing, then uh, go ahead and equip this. Me, I like counterattacks. Alright, next up we have Salvatore, who joins the party after the second extra map. 
She is very much a gun user, learning four gun skills, although she can also learn three each of the sword and axe skills. Her primary ability, D Protection, uh, protects her from special attacks, cutting the damage she takes in half. Her secondary ability, C Sniping, uh, well, I have E-Canceler equipped, so let's talk about that. E-Canceler ignores elemental defense when she is attacking. So, if you were going to teach her magic for whatever reason, she could use that. Uh, elemental special skills are pretty handy. So yeah, she just pierces elemental defense. As for her unique skills, First one of these is the Great Gun King, which uh, hits a plus shape with the center a whopping five panels away from her. If I'm counting right, yeah, five panels. And this is what it looks like. For a second, I thought the uh, audio resynced itself, but uh, I guess I still have to edit that. Alright, her other unique skill is Duel, which hits in a straight line up to six tiles away. That has to be uh, one of the longest ranges. That's like the second longest range of any special attack in the game, I think. So, yeah. Better yet, it has S-level power. The downside of this is that both of her special attacks use her attack stat, not her hit and speed stats, even though they are clearly supposed to be gun skills. <laughs> Chalk it up to an oversight, maybe character balance, I don't know. Salvatore's other uh, ability is C Sniping. Normal attacks crit damage increased by 100% if not moved. Uh, note that this is crit damage. As such, it's pretty good if you can guarantee a critical hit, but uh, the movement restriction kind of makes it a bit too situational for my tastes. Plus, it runs completely counter to my usual strategy, which is hit and run. <laughs> or rather, run and hit. Run across the field, smack their lights out. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Just watch. Just watch. What do you think? So yeah, here I'm demonstrating that uh, sea sniping also applies as long as you. Uh, as long as you don't use a move command, uh, you can throw Salatori around all you want. Of course, since I don't even get a critical hit against either of these guys, the entire purpose of the demo is kind of null and void. <laughs> Go figure. Next up, we have Prism Red, who is such a joke character, I'm not even going to give him the time of day. What? What do you mean I have to demo him? Oh, fine. Burning fire! Prism Red only has one ability. It's not even that good. He only has one unique skill. It's terrible. He magic changes to a sword, but his unique his uh his magic chain skills aren't all that good either, from what I remember. Swift justice, melee range, E rank attack. Yeah, like I said, he's a joke character. Just watch. Fire. One day I will. 
He doesn't even have magic chain skills. <laughs> Those are Asagi's unique skills. So, uh, yeah. Well, like I said, Prism Red is kind of a joke. So instead, let's talk about Asagi. She's pretty okay. She's a bow and gun user, learning five gun skills, three bow skills. Her primary ability, Heroine's Dream, uh, does the same thing it did in Disgaea 2. It increases her stats when there are a lot of male allies on the map. As for her secondary ability, Sky High, which makes her a flying type mover, that means she can run right through enemies without a care in the world. I like this ability a lot, so much, in fact, that I would recommend putting it on anybody you want to be an item world runner. Except for a masked hero, because that's kind of redundant on them since they're already flying type. <laughs> Here I uh, end up showing off her uh, things, and oh yeah, you can uh, you unlock uh, Prism Red by clearing Extra Map Three and Asagi by clearing Extra Map Four. Asagi is a uh, character from the game that would eventually become Makai Kingdom. The uh, game got cancelled pretty early in development, but it left them with only one year to uh, make Makai Kingdom, so. Uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. On the one hand, we got a really great uh, running gag cameo character from a game that doesn't exist. <laughs> and on the other hand, we got uh, Makai Kingdom, which uh, kind of felt rushed, even though it did introduce us to the most badass freaking overlord in the cosmos. So, um, yeah, that is Asagi, and... Uh, her other skill, de her other uh, ability, Dead or Alive, uh, makes her own crit rate 100%, but all attacks that hit her will also be crits. So, watch out. Here I'm trying to uh, experiment to see if uh, her ability affects allies, but it in fact does not. It only affects Asagi, and anyone attacking her. So yeah. One day I will. Here we go with the throat pain again. <laughs> So while we are here, let's talk about Morona. Morona is the main character of Phantom Brave. You get her by uh, by clearing extra map five, and she is primarily a magic user. Um, let's see here. Yes, Morona learns healing magic up to the Terra level, along with Espoir and the six buff spells. Pretty good. Her uh, her int and res aptitudes are pretty high. But her abilities leave a little bit to be desired. Uh, by the way, she learns three spear skills in addition to all of her magic. Now then. Her primary ability, Power of Miracles, increases the stats of allied ghosts on the map by 20%. Kind of silly, I mean, it works at an infinite range, but on the other hand, it only affects ghosts. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Fuka doesn't count. Uh, anyway, her, other, her secondary abilities are Bond of Souls, which... Uh, as you can see, gives her an infinite magic change. Infinity more turns! Good times. Also, I think infinity is drawn with kind of a weird font, but, you know, whatever. Here we go. 
Shine of Souls increases the mana gain rate of allies on the map by 20%. Pretty good, but I mean, when you have like 29 stacks of managers, it, it's kind of not really all that important. <laughs> oh well. She's got some decent enough uh, special skills, I guess. Although, honestly, I would probably use her for her healing potential. Because 140% res is uh, pretty good, all things considered. If only we could get her sooner in the game. <laughs> you know, back when we actually needed healers! But, yeah. That's Morona! Rocking over the uh, the wire for my headset, and it's gonna kill my headset eventually. The woes of not having a proper desk. Next up, we have Axel, and I am going to uh, equip him with a power weight too because of one of his abilities. Anyway, Axel is about the same as he was in Disguise 2. He has high uh, attack and speed aptitudes. He's a really good fist user, even though I didn't actually use him in my playthrough. He learns five fist skills, four sword spill skills, sword spills. Yes, let's spill all the swords in the ocean of space, I don't know, <laughs> and three spear skills. His primary ability, Obvious Tendency, is the opposite of Asagi's. It increases stats per female ally unit on the map. His secondary ability here, Entertainment Life, uh, makes him immune to non-elemental special attacks if his HP is low. So if you know that a guy uh, well, actually, it doesn't even make him immune to normal attacks, so... Uh, kind of situational. I wouldn't depend on it, but I guess it's okay for if you have nothing better. As for his... Uh, as for his unique skills, <laughs> please observe. Guitar lightning. The best kind of lightning. Axel is the true guitar man! <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. Shake my hand. Axel my goes all uh, SpongeBob SquarePants the movie on us in uh, My Heart Shakes. And then he does a wimpy punch that makes the enemy explode. <laughs> so weird. Finally, Love Dynamite, which is a very uh, wide-hitting attack. Uh, if you don't have a if you don't have a guy who knows Big Bang, this is a poor man's substitute. Uh, but again, you have to be using Axel for it to accomplish anything because nobody else can learn it. It's a unique skill. Anyway, Axel's other ability is Image Change, which switches his HP and SP and his attack and int. Uh, this probably exists mainly to be passed on to other guys, although I can't really imagine who off the top of my head. <laughs> Very weird. But yeah, it's there. Finally, we have Rutil and Stella, who are both exclusive to... Uh, to absence of detention. 
Rutil specializes in fists, axes, and guns, learning six skills from each of them. She also learns healing magic up to the terror level and Espar. I, of course, liking my Kung Fu kitties and my fist users, opted to have her specialize in fists. Her primary ability, Ring of Friends, increases stats when she is adjacent to units and uh, when there is a long chain of adjacent units. It doesn't have to be allies, it can also be enemies, which makes Rutil uh, incredibly broken <laughs> in a number of scenarios. As for her other ability, Homing Instinct, um, as you can see, I magic changed Prism Red over, and uh, when it runs out, Prism Red will return to the panel, uh, none the worse for wear. Thus, you can probably have her... Actually, I don't know how the magic change uh, works after you've already done it once. But uh, yeah, you can just pull Prism Red right out of the base panel again, and it's a thing. As for Rutil's special abilities, or special skills rather, I don't know why I keep calling, mixing up my skills and abilities, and aptitudes. <laughs> the things I have mixed up keep getting mixed up. So yeah, as you can see, uh, it's Ring of Friends, pretty powerful. Anyway, Kitty Cat Copter! It hits everybody around her. And it is the Tatsumaki Senpu Kyaku. Disguise style. <laughs> Gotta love it. <clears throat> By the way, Rutil joins the party at the start of the, uh, of the Nether Institute Majin Academy. Or Death Institute Majin Academy storyline. Rutil joins at the end. Me too. Or Stella joins at the end. I can't English. I can't talk today. Keep mixing up my names, mixing up my characters, and mixing up my names with my characters. It's all of them. Catly Rave uh, very much brings to mind Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> or maybe Super Mario Bros. Z, since I don't know if Dragon Ball Z is actually a same sort of style, but, uh, it's, uh, you are already dead. <laughs> Fist of the North Star reference, way to go. Anyway, next up we have Cat God Cometh, which, uh, summons somebody who is very much not Long Cat, much to the, uh, chagrin of internet enthusiasts everywhere. Uh, that, that is so creepy! Like, what? Actually, I guess that emblem on his uh, loincloth or whatever could uh, potentially be seen as Long Cat. <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Um, right. Salad. <laughs> and here I just blow up a Geocube for no particular reason. Uh, Rutil's other ability, let's do this. Um gives her a huge boost in her stats after she uh, receives a buffing spell. So, uh, yeah, I never actually used this ability because I gave her sky high, but, uh... I will do my best. <coughs> it's actually a really great ability. Highly recommended if you, uh... Really so if you have nothing better, sounds like I don't recommend it, but, uh... I do actually recommend it. You could probably work this into a strategy somewhere that revolves around routine and uh, buffs and other such crazy. As for Stella, uh, she is a sword and spear user, learning six of each. Her main ability, Presidential Air, uh, 
powers her up when she's adjacent to units and powers those units down. So, uh, surround her with enemies, she is good to go. Her other ability, Heat Depression, decreases everybody's fire resistance by 30%, um, except her. So yeah, minus 55%, etc. This could be useful if uh, so many bosses weren't already weak to fire in the story, and if she wasn't like one of the last things you could get in anything resembling a story. Yeah, I'm just gonna shut up. It's, uh, it's a thing. These are her attacks. They are a thing. This is elegance! <laughs> yeah. At least her attacks look cool. <laughs> And then I have to send her into battle again to show off her last skill. Stella's final skill is not being able to get out of the base panel. It is Flame Hazard, which hits a 3x3 three three area at a range. Pretty nice, actually. Mighty Elements, her final ability, increases attack by 30% uh, of her base int. I think that's what it said. And oh yeah, Stella is actually secretly a Salamander. <laughs> Pretty great. So yeah, um, I actually uh, neglected to mention this, but uh, Stella also learns fire magic up to the Terra level, so uh, pretty good all around. Good mix of offense and stuff, but you get her so late that by then you're very likely to have a lot better characters, so, which is kind of the uh, tragedy of all of these post-game units. <laughs> But yeah, that's the post-game, guys. Uh, next up, we will be doing the Disgaea 1 crew. Alright? Alright. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.